In this video, we're going to look at variables. Variables are one of the fundamentals of programming, and it's very important that you understand this because it will have a great impact in terms of your ability to code down the road. One of the benefits of understanding a basic like variables is that once you understand PHP variables, you pretty much understand what variables are in every programming language that's really used today. In our exploration of variables, we're going to cover them, well, we're going to cover three major parts. A, what exactly are variables, how to create variables, and why, why we have variables in the first place. Let's start off by actually creating a PHP variable, and then from there we'll get into some of the details. So I popped open Windows Notepad and uh, with our basic HTML template page here. And here's our PHP tags. So let's create a variable. PHP variables always start with the dollar symbol. When the PHP engine sees a dollar symbol, it knows that we're, it's about to look at a variable here. Let's give the variable a name and let's say we'll call it name. Variables always start with a dollar symbol. There has to be no space between the dollar symbol and the text. And the text itself can be uppercase or lowercase. This is fine. This is fine. Doesn't matter. And they can start with an underscore. They cannot start with a, a number or any special symbols like anything like this. So I would suggest that you create all your variables with the dot, well, obviously you start with the dollar symbol and keep it lowercase. And there's a reason for this later on when we look at other aspects of PHP. As we learned before, whenever you write a line of PHP code, you have to end it with a semicolon. So I'll say that, that's it. We've created our first variable. So the next step is to look at specifically what's happening and what are we doing when we're creating a variable. In a nutshell, a variable is essentially a container in memory, think about your computer memory, that contains information. Sometimes it could be text information, sometimes it could be numbers, and sometimes it could be other things, which we'll get into later on. So right now, when you create a variable like this, where I just go dollar sign and I give the variable a name, I basically reserved a spot in memory, an actual physical spot in your physical memory it, well, in this case, because this is a server-side language, it's actually in the server's memory. But I've actually haven't filled this container with any information. So let's fill it with some information. And you do that by using the equal signs. So we're going to go name equals, double quotes, Stefan. Now, we've used double quotes because this is a text string. Remember, a string of text is just one piece of text followed by another. So now we've created a variable and we've given it the value of Stefan. And Stefan happens to be a text string. We know that because it's got the double quotes, right? This equal sign here, nerds call this the assignment operator because it assigns the value of Stefan to the variable called name. It's called an assignment operator because it's, you can think of it in terms of uh, an operation. It operates on. So it's the best analogy I can come up with. Anyhow, so this is the assignment operator. And it assigns the value of Stefan to the variable called name. What the variable name is really is just a, a reserve spot in the server's memory. Think about your RAM memory. You can have, you know. 500 megs of RAM, one gig of RAM. So this is actually putting the value of Stefan into a spot in memory, and we've named that spot in memory, we called it name. So this begs the question, why would you want to do this? The reason that you create variables, and we know that creating variables, variables is just basically putting information inside of a container and giving it a name, the name being the name of the variable. The reason that we do this is so that we can use this information, in this case it's a St Stefan, later on in our scripts. Think of it as a bag, you know, you're sticking some, you know, some, some stuff in a bag, 
In this case, it's the name Stefan. And so then we can use that bag and we can carry around this information using different parts in our scripts to do all kinds of interesting things. This will all become very clear later. The main points you want to get out of this is that a variable is basically a container for information. This is the information. You assign information to a variable using the assignment operator, which is the equal sign. And you know that an, a variable name, uh, excuse me, a variable is just a reserved spot in your server's memory. Now I'm talking about RAM memory. So now that we got this basic theory covered, let's actually put this to some use. So I'm going to just copy this. And we've looked at the print function before. So I'm just going to I'll just go print name. And it with a semicolon, of course, because we all always have to end that. I'm going to save that. And now I'm going to view this in the web browser. And we're going to see what it looks like. I've popped open Firefox. I'm at the page. And we see the text Stefan. If we view the source, as simple as it gets, it just prints out the text Stefan. So we've seen how we declared a variable here. When you create a variable, it's called declaring a variable. That's what nerds will say. We assigned it the value of Stefan. And now we've used that variable in a PHP statement. And we said print the variable name. PHP is smart enough to know that the variable name contains the text, the text Stefan. So it just prints it out for us. To give you an idea of the power of variables, take a look at this. Copy paste this. Bring that here. And I'll insert uh, the old horizontal rule, which nobody uses anymore. All right. So you see in our, in our code here, we have our first PHP block, some basic HTML, and our second, our second PHP block. You notice here we've declared a variable, our name variable here, and we haven't used it here. And down the road, We've, we've bas we're basically now asking PHP to use the, the name variable and to print out its value on the screen. So we'll just hit save, pop open the browser, there we go. So we got our horizontal rule and our, our name Stefan here. So this is a very, very basic example, but you can see how we've basically stuck the value of Stefan inside of a container and we've used it later on in our script here. This is, uh, this is very basic, and you're going to see how variables become very, very useful as we move along deeper into PHP.